First on BBC One Wales, it's the Noel Edmund Saturday Roadshow. visiting the mothers. Out here in this inky void sprayed with stars is a satellite, a station that hasn't ever seen a train, so nothing unusual there. Yes, join us now in orbit as we make space for the Noel Edmund Saturday Roadshow. <laughs> So pleased to be here safely. This has been quite the most hazardous journey we've undertaken on this roadshow series because, ladies and gentlemen, we are actually on board Britain's first and until now secret space station, HMSS GBH2. <laughs> Zero gravity environment, which is all right for us here because this is a fully magnetized zone and I've got metal shoes on, but I must ask every single person in our specially invited area to make sure their seat belts are well and truly fastened, please. Could you check your seat belts now to make sure that they are fastened? Don't undo them! Don't undo them! <laughs> now you see, that's what happens if you don't follow the strict safety. You don't follow the strict safety code. <laughs> This is a serious business, space the final frontier, we've got to watch what we're doing here. We hope to bring you live pictures of Britain's first ever spacewalk, which indeed will be a great... Oh, Kitty, you're back! Oh, you are brave! Oh, come on, you're so brave to go out there! I wouldn't go out there, if they asked me to do a spacewalk, I'd have kittens! Oh, what's your name? Major Tom. <laughs> In our wait till I get you home feature, we've got some very outspoken views indeed. Nothing quite like Marianne talking about what was the bravest thing her dad did. Marry me, Mum. <laughs> I can promise you, in the wait till I get you home we've got this week, there are some very outspoken views, mainly from the parents. That's to come. It's all part of a Gloria Honeyford hit on me. I thought this incident was her getting her own back. Are you ready, Mr. Edmund? I'm ready to receive. <laughs> Well, that was Gloria getting her own back, but unfortunately she does do it with a little bit more style. That's to come. Don't forget, if you're in Northern Europe, I understand the weather is very good this evening, clear skies, so you can look out and see our space station flashing past. A space station that this week is crammed with VIP guests. We've got some people who, unfortunately, have been diverted from a charter flight from Luton. Um, we've also got with us Mary Poppins there on an away day. Ah, Chappie looks like a Greek god. Can you, can you stand up a moment, sir? I thought so. It's Apollo 5. <laughs> and next to him, Captain Kirk. I recognise the log. <laughs> and the gentleman at the end is not a milkman with an aerial on his head. That is, in fact, UHT, the extra cholesterol. <laughs> oh, they are our specially invited guests. And what you are now about to see could well be... British astronauts training for this great venture in space. In fact, it is a pub game. You'll be on the plank there, and these two guys are going to pick you up. You will have these two to hold on to, so you're perfectly safe. But when we've got you up to a height of about three feet, which is what they think they can lift you to, I will hold your hand and see whether you've got the guts, considering you're totally blindfolded, to jump the three feet onto the grass. All right? Lift! Oh. Oh, well done. Are you all right? Oh, higher? Can you go any higher? Oh, all right. I 
I've got you, I've got you. Don't worry, I'm holding you, Claire. Don't worry. I've got you. OK. All right, let's, let's take the two guys away from in front. Hold on, hold, hold on there, Claire. All right, now, Claire. In your own time. That terribly exhaustive training session for would-be British astronauts, I'd like just to bring a slightly serious note to the proceedings from the space station because there is one gentleman who has the responsibility for our safety and I think it'd be a good idea to meet the commander of the space station, Commander Bubbers. Say, Edna, <laughs> don't bother with all that. Just call me Miles. <laughs> I, I, I must admit, Miles, I didn't realise that Britain had a space program. I think the real breakthrough for we Brits came when we discovered rocket fuel. We put it in and uh, took off like um, like a um, rocket, like, like a rocket. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> as long as we found a milk bottle big enough, of course. <laughs> And you know, Edmonds, this rocket is totally British design. Designed by Boffins. No, no, Blue Peter. <laughs> Amazing what you can do these days with a yoghurt carton, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Commander, can you tell us a little bit about some of this technical equipment? Yes, yes, come over and have a look at some of it. The, the computer's here. Now, that computer over there, that tells us our coordinates in space. Uh -huh. That computer there tells us our fuel consumption for re-entry. And this computer here tells me how much I've got left in my building society account. <laughs> If it breaks down, we just call the AA. Astronauts Association? Yes, he's a very nice man. He's a very, very, very nice man. Very, very, very. You're a very nice man. What? You're a very, very nice man. God, you're attractive. <laughs> Um, what about the element of communications? Communications? Well, we leave that to George over there, mainly because he's the only one with a phone card. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a backup system just in case. And surely affected this too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you mentioned the subject of loneliness. Do you, yes. do you ever get visitors? Well, we did actually see an alien on the scanner. I can tell you that was damned frightening and pretty hideous as well. E.T.? No, 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 E.C. Edwina Curry. <laughs> Good egg. Good egg. Uh, I, I say, Edmunds, how do you fancy having a go at a crack at flying this thing yourself? I'd love to. Yeah. Love to. Well, it's very simple. The controls are over there. Just take it easy. And remember, don't touch the red button. And if you want to turn left, don't stick your hand out of the window. Johnny, go. I'll All give right. you go, Commander. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Commander Bubbles. Thank you very much, Commander. That's no, 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 here is a very interesting item of uh, space hardware. It's not what you might think. This is not a simple, ordinary teapot. 
In fact, uh, that is an E.T. bag. <laughs> and if you thought that was bad, I'll quickly get on to this for all you space lovers. This is the very latest shuttlecock. <laughs> Quite right, there's nothing more to it than that. And also, of course, food in space is incredibly important. You know all about astronauts' rations. This, in fact, is lobster thermidor. <laughs> you just uh, add water to make an absolutely delicious meal. In fact, before we came on the air, I did make up some uh, <laughs> thermidor for you. So life is not too tough for us up here. We'll be telling you a little bit more about the spacewalk in a moment. But another serious matter for you to consider. I am indebted to all the viewers, in your thousands I thank you, for spotting this man, a terrible man who perpetrates awful broadcasting injustices. Yes, we caught Murray Walker in the clown court! You are... Murray Wheels Walker of no fixed abode. Yes, Your Honour. How do you plead? I've been subframed. It's a fit up. <laughs> Not guilty. Let's see the evidence. And it must be all up now. I don't think John Creed is going to have a hope of. Yes, he is! Creed is. <laughs> I was just about to say that Creedley hadn't got a hope of passing Martin Schenker when he did it before my very eyes. It <laughs> so appears that you've been passing this dubious talent on to an apprentice. The 13 previous winners of the Race of Champions, the last in 1979, won by the late and great Gilles Villeneuve. The previous two won by James Hunt, who, as ever, is with me here. I can't remember anything about them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Tell me, Mr. Walker, in what way do you feel qualified to do the job that you do? Well, I'm very experienced. You mean you can actually drive a Formula One car? Well, uh, a bit. They say clothes make the man. Well, the clothes are Nicky Lauder's, but the contents are me, Murray Walker, here at Silverstone to achieve a life's ambition. Drive a Formula One Grand Prix car. Do you have any other qualifications? Well, my timing's always been pretty good. And now, as the race starts, my regrets, we must leave Brands Hatch. Join us again at quarter to five. <laughs> well, that wasn't my fault. And the interviews? Were they not your fault also? Well, actually, I do very well with the interviews. I point out all sorts of things. Nigel, first of all, will you carefully and slowly take your hat off? You've got an enormous bump on your head. Can you, can you let them see it? I don't know whether... Right up there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bernie, it's some 17 years since you bought McLaren. You've had some good times and you've had some bad times. What do you remember best? I don't remember buying McLaren. <laughs> Tell us about it from your point of view. <laughs> Wayne Gardner was right up with you, Eddie, in the closing stages. Did you ever have any fears that he was going to get through? And how are your tyres performing? Anything to say in your defence so far? <laughs> so we come to the most serious charge brought by this court, that of jinxing prospective winners with one slip of your tongue. Ha, ah, I'd like to see you prove that one. Spectacular driving, watch this! Wins looks through a completely clean windscreen, and that's the big advantage, of course, of being in front. <laughs> I just think you're being very unfair. I'm not a jinx at all. If I was, I couldn't even mention things like the clerk's table. <laughs> or your chair. <laughs> Take him away. Oh, good. Can I drive? <laughs> They look absolutely superb. They're gorgeous. Marvellous. Some of those must be so expensive. No, no, not at 
at all. In fact, I got mine for a ridiculous figure. <laughs> they can see that for themselves, darling. <laughs> what do you think of space, Joy? Space? Pah! Just hour upon hour upon hour of, uh, of nothing. A bit like TVAM, really. <laughs> Fascinating. I've been looking at Earth, you see, through my telescope. It's very interesting. Did it look round? Yes, but I don't think it saw me. <laughs> look, look, we've got to go, dear. One, apparently one of the retro rockets is, is sick, and, and we've got to fix it. Yes. Why are you two? Well, because we're the sick bit fitters. And you can't get bigger than the sick bit fitters. This is a very complex space station indeed, and this is the whole nerve centre. All the systems and the control systems come through this area, and there are buttons for absolutely everything. There's a button here that says press for oxygen, one that says press for refreshment, and one that says press for more. More? More what, I wonder? <laughs> come to the first British space station ever since I was very young and here it is absolutely terrific and you know I've almost got no weight I feel much less than I used to I, 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 I don't have nothing at all isn't that great and look at the view look over there Venus Mars Uranus and you can see the solar system over there look the Andromeda galaxy over here Castor and Pollux oh. you, know what, you know what I thought is you liked the ocean Pollux didn't you know I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Are you going to be up here for Christmas? Uh, hopefully not. Well, if you do, it'll be absolutely wonderful. Unwrapping your presence in zero gravity. Yes. How would you unwrap in zero gravity? I haven't the foggiest idea. Well, do try, won't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Patrick, this is marvellous that Good. you've come all this way. And I'm so pleased to, nice to, to bask in your enthusiasm. Good. I wonder, uh, in view of the fact I haven't understood a word you've said so far, well. um, <laughs> you play a game involving words. Why not? Now you're here. If you Why could not? just come over here. We've got Certainly. a place to A little bit of information about her. She works in a city bank. She's one of the city prices. <laughs> she speaks Spanish, got her A level in a matter of weeks. She's only four foot eleven, which is why she's called half price. <laughs> well, <laughs> what price freedom for her to get out of there? Because this has been specially adapted, although gravity is not working in any other part of the space station. Tough luck for you, it is working here in the sludge cabinet, but it might not happen. Because Patrick is very quick. Famous names concealed in other words. They appear on the screen in front of you like this. Who is that? Patrick Moore. Well done. That's how they appear. Could you do three in 90 seconds? In which case we would give you this fabulous prize, a hamper. Just right for Christmas. <laughs> Don't do that. It is a good prize. Four in 90 <laughs> seconds. Look at all that poo. <laughs> and five in 90 seconds would get you a video recorder and a wonderful array of videos to watch as well. What are you going for in 90? I'll go for five. Five! <laughs> what a moment this is going to be. In as back home on earth, millions and millions of hairdressers say to themselves, how on earth is Sir Barnett going to stand up for this <laughs> lot? <laughs> OK, Patrick, I hope you're ready for this. The I'm words are written on the cards. Right. I've not seen the words before. Right. I give you a clue. Right. You say what's written down here on right. the screen. It goes, the right. moment you've got any idea, right. go for it. Right. And no doubt the special guests right. will help as well. OK, the 90 seconds starts <coughs> now. A cup of... Eggs. Uh, no, a drink. Uh, beers. Uh, Pants. No, a cup of... You know, a cup of... Tea. Tea, yeah. Uh, Danny... Bear. Uh, pun? Danny uh, K. Yes, well done. Um, it's a horrible Pace spot. Oh, yes, well done. Uh, the opposite of yes. Oh. <laughs> opposite of yes! <laughs> no! A uh, little thing for in the garden, you flower pit. Towel. And you, uh, no, it's on the, it's a pole with a little thing on the end. Ho! Oh. 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 Ho! Well done, yes. Um, you put it down your trousers. It's alive, uh. it's a furry animal. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, it's that. Me! Yes! Got it? Nino Ferrito. Nino Ferrito! Yes, that will do! <laughs> uh, CID used the finger. Prince. Nail. <laughs> no! Prince. <laughs> Princess Anne. Princess Margaret. Margaret Anne. Elizabeth. Anne, you said. Anne. Anne. I'm getting confused. What happened? Princess Anne. Opposite of no. Yes. Yes. Um, if you get shot, you. Uh, Die. Uh, yes, well done. Princess Diane. Oh. Yes, well done. Um, oh, oh, God. What's that say? Left. Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> that, that previous girl's name we had before. Princess Anne. Yes. Um, if you collect something, it rhymes with board, and you, you collect it, and you. Sword. No, no. no. Hall. Yes, very good. 
Quick! And a, f and a food. Yes. A fishing thing for net rod. Rod. Very good. Um, it's like a little um, uh, gnome. It's a sort of a no, no, gnome. No. Pen. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, what a shame. <laughs> oh, isn't this a shame? And is this your Christmas best you've got on? You're all sort of plastic wrapped, aren't you? You're all fr Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get on with it, Patrick. Well. I can't see any reason. <laughs> It's, it's Christmas, it's the last one of the series. <laughs> would you settle for the champagne? Yeah. You would. Yeah. Paula, thank you very much <laughs> yeah. for playing along. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Moore. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> well, of course, I promise you, I promise you all a historic moment in the history of space exploration. We are here in the first British space station and we hopefully are going to bring you the first pictures of a British space walk. But I should also like to point out that we are here to celebrate the inauguration of the first British satellite broadcasting service. And I think we can see outside um, a satellite television <laughs> in ge geostationary orbit. And hopefully, yes, there's the commander. Ladies and gentlemen, there is the commander. Hey. for a spacewalk often? Yeah, I'm here, I'm afraid, sir. We've got an outside loo. <laughs> Tell me, how does it feel to be drifting aimlessly? Yes, actually, actually, this weightlessness is fun, you know. Yes, now I know how Ron Atkinson feels when he takes his jewellery off. <laughs> <laughs> I can say, look, milk plate. <laughs> oh. Now then, either that's a UFO or else Mr Whippy's in the area. <laughs> Presumably you don't believe in all this rubbish about space aliens. I mean, horrible creatures that make disgusting noises. Are you kidding? I've got all Banana Rama's records. <laughs> the nearest waiting, talking Italian. <laughs> Do you need special training? Uh, no, no, I just pick it up watching their videos. <laughs> I see what you mean. That's non-eaten angling and sewing association. They <laughs> said to me, they said, we want you to go out there and investigate a vast void. I said, you leave Fergie out of this. <laughs> now, what exactly are you doing out there? Is it sort of essential maintenance? No, no, not exactly that. No, no, no. Well, what then? Well, the trouble is, I've got to take Rover for a walk. Come on, Rover. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go and chase him actually now because the nearest tree is about 200 light years away. <laughs> Thank you, when we started this roadshow series all those hundreds, thousands of miles ago, the first recipient of a gotcha Oscar was Gloria Honeyford. We played a little prank on her in her radio studio, and she won her award. And I thought that was it. I thought Gloria's so nice, but then on the show she said, I'll get you, Edmund. Or something like that. <laughs> and she has. Ladies and gentlemen, Gloria Honeyford. This is not going to be like a triple hit with green sludge and stuff, is it? I don't know. I'm a little bit uneasy about all of this. I've only just got over what you did to me. <laughs> oh, was it that good? Uh, oh. <laughs> all those weeks ago, there we were in your radio studio. We can see you taking part in a live broadcast. You didn't know there were hidden cameras. I certainly did not. And then your engineer appeared and did this most terrible thing to the record that was actually playing. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
came on the program the first week and I said I'll get you for it right. and I waited and I waited and I tried to work out how I'd do it would I try to enlist say your wife Helen's help and do it maybe somewhere around home would I <laughs> well whatever you know or would, would I um, maybe try and get you when you're doing a voiceover or a personal appearance and then I thought that home territory was probably the least place that you would that you would expect yeah. so we enlisted of course your team and only f about four people knew, so when, when it actually came to the night, the audience didn't know anything about it. They were just as much in the dark as you were. And I must explain that, if you don't mind me explaining, do you? Please do. Sorry. Please do. Because uh, in the section where it involves wait till I get you home with parents and child, uh, Noel, of course, thought, well, it's just an average family, two very nice parents and the child chatting away. But he didn't know that they were all in the acting profession. But watch how... The father's reaction builds up. He gets very hot under the collar, and there were cat calls from the audience saying, Get on with it, and don't be such a spoiled sport. But your face was, was priceless in the end. It was terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm dreading this. Oh, unfortunately, we don't have time to show it because we. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Here it comes. Terrific. Wait till I get Gloria home. <laughs> This is the feature where the parents get put under the spotlight and they are going to really get a grilling tonight. Ah, oh, you've got to feel sorry for David and Sarah Lewis. from Tufnell Park to Venice. No, I'm joking about the grilling and whatever. You're all right. It was Ben, your little boy Ben, I had a chat with, and he told me lots of interesting things. But let's first of all find out something about you. David is an architect. He says he has a good, strong sense of humour, but doesn't always let it show, <laughs> except when you're designing buildings, no doubt. <laughs> and Sarah sometimes works part-time at the local Oxfam shop. That's, That's right. good work. Yes. We have some unusual things in Oxfam shops. Yes, we have clothes and bits and pieces. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've got all my jumpers there. That's wonderful. All right, no need to agree. And Ben, he's quite an interesting lad. I started off by asking Ben, does Dad have any bad habits? Now, we can give you some options here. Did he come straight out with yes and then said something? Did he say no? Did he say ask Mum? A Venetian mask could be yours. <laughs> oh, bank busting <laughs> Ask, ask, ask mum, actually. Ask mum, yeah. Ask mum. You th and what would you say is better? <laughs> um, he bites his nails. Does he? Um, wears socks in bed. <laughs> <laughs> you wear socks in bed? <laughs> Why? Well, uh, cold feet. <laughs> You can tell me. <laughs> Do you wear anything else? Ah, <coughs> uh, um... He does? He does, yeah. Cool. Well, well, well. What else is he? What else is he? I mean, just straight between the three of us. What else? What else? What else is he wearing bed? It's pyjamas. Oh, that's not very <laughs> completely forgotten where we are. What, I was asking for, yes, any bad habits? And uh, you think Ben said, oh, ask mum. Did he? He talks with his mouth full and he scratches his under, under his arm. Is that a bad habit? Well, he tells me off when I do it. <laughs> so I'm afraid uh, it wasn't ask mum. Never mind, we move on to a plate of spaghetti. We got on the trip back on the train. Plate of spaghetti. I asked him, where do babies come from? Did he say hospital? Did he say mummies? Or did he say quick change exhaust specialists? <laughs> or did he say something else? Um, I just think he'd said mummies. Mummies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <my> brain, so. <laughs> the postman. Mum says the postman gave my baby brother to her. <laughs> I'm 
not saying a word. <laughs> not a word. You haven't won anything so far. <laughs> I wonder if the postman's watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right, if you could have any toy in the world, I said to him, what would it be? Did he say, I'd like a baby sister? <laughs> Postman. <laughs> Did he say that he wanted West Ham United Football Club or that he wanted Karen Keating or something else? We are playing for a radio! Um. <clears throat> right, David. Yeah, um, something Com perhaps electronic, yes? Computer, mm. I think. Computer. A computer. A computer. <laughs> The big budget show we're going for a string of garlic i asked him has anything funny ever happened to your family was it something to do with mum that he told me about was it something to do with you david or was it something to do with a family pet or was it something totally else that he thought was funny in the family um oh, something to do with david i should think <laughs> To, do you want to reply? Um. <laughs> do you do you, uh, do you want to go home? <laughs> um, David got locked outside the front door with his um, dressing gown on one morning. <laughs> Busy waiting for the postman. <laughs> it's a vision because I bet he had the socks on, did he? <laughs> when you're going to have to come outside the front door. <laughs> right, OK, so uh, it's something to do with Dad. Dad's false teeth fell into his teeth. <laughs> they fell out when he was laughing. <laughs> I play with him sometimes. <laughs> play monsters and bite my baby sister. <laughs> We now move on to something serious. <laughs> An espresso coffee maker could be yours. What's the silliest... I'm sorry about this, David, but you really are coming in with a stick here. It's a question of, what's the silliest thing Dad has ever done? <laughs> now... Did... Did, Dad... <laughs> did Ben say that Dad is the model of perfection? <laughs> he makes silly noises. He goes hang gliding. <laughs> or he does something else. And we're playing for that coffee maker. What did he say? Um, something else. <laughs> Probably the answer to the last question. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, so uh, you're still with, with teeth and things. And, uh, and we're going to find out what, what it was that... Um, that does, it's a bit uh, silly. Burp him. <laughs> Burp's the grandstand music. Give us a demonstration. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, no. Fine. I mean, there is a moment for talent to show itself. And maybe now is not that moment. Now, here it is—the big one, the final one. The agony is nearly over, and it's the gnomes we're playing for. I asked Ben, does Mum have a silly name for Dad? <laughs> now, what you've got to bear in mind is what a kid thinks is silly is possibly not what an adult thinks is silly, but anyway. Um, did he say no? Did he say yes? Did he say yes? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
but I don't think I could tell you. <laughs> oh, did he say something else? I think he said yes, but I don't think I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what it is. No? <laughs> I think Ben is. Is it wobbly bobbly? Because he's got a fat bottom and it wobbles. Is it possible that you could not send this out, really? Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh. No, I don't, find it, I don't find it very funny. I mean, I must have got the wrong idea about the programme or something, because I didn't realise... Oh, I am sorry. ...personal oh. remarks. Oh, I am terribly sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I just think it's not very funny. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were taking it funny. No, I don't, I don't like it. I mean, would you like it if, I mean, if someone asked you things like that? I think it's just a bit of fun. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I just feel, you know, very awkward about it. And I, d I mean, can you guarantee that it won't go out? Yes, certainly. Of course. Yeah. I, mean, I had absolutely no idea that you weren't... Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. You weren't I, enjoying I, it. I didn't want to spoil everyone's fun, but, I mean, I just feel it's... I thought you were acting incredibly well. <laughs> no, I just didn't, uh, didn't find it very funny. I'm sorry. OK, well, we can to do quite it, easily right? lose the thing. Obviously, we respect your wishes. No problem at all, David. Sorry mm -hmm. that you feel that way about it. That's right. Uh, we just have to wait for a decision as to how we will redo <laughs> the... Uh, redo the part of the show. Right, okay. I don't know, we haven't got anything else we can play in the office. No, no, but I, yeah. And that's the one that's offensive and, um, you know, would it be alright? Right. You, 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 Noel's mic is out. Mike, Noel's mic is out, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, where would you was it, was it just, was it one thing in particular? I mean, you can quite easily well, cut it down. It's just a bit so personal at the, at the end. I just found it a bit too much, you know. I mean, I just, it was all sort of, like, just getting at me and things that, you know, my habits and things, but... Is it, I mean, is, would there be any point in, say, keeping the first couple rather yeah, than well, junking the whole thing? Yeah, if I'm, you want to, yeah, so I don't mind the first I mean, I'm, two I'm, so much. It's with the later stuff that I don't want. Well, I mean, great. what, um, what we can quite easily do, I mean, the last thing we want to do, David, is cause you any, uh, it's the last last two. I just felt a bit. I mean, it's just I'm a bit worried. You know, in case obviously clients and people are watching. Yeah, no, no, that's fair enough. It's just fair in, being made a fool of in what, front of people. What, obviously, obviously, yeah. Obviously, what we want to do is not uh, chuck it all out if possible. We respect your wishes, obviously. Yeah. I mean, if you do want to chuck it all out, then you must say. But if we could just hold on to maybe a couple just, of yeah. them. Oh. I'm just thinking, you know, because uh, from Ben's point of view. Uh, how can yeah. we how can we wrap it up so that there's no loss of face or embarrassment? Sorry to put you in this situation. Oh, sorry, I, I, I'm just being a bit sensitive about it, but I just you know, I didn't I don't find it very funny laughing at sort of people's habits and things. Yeah. It's just okay. uh, not my sense of humour, I suppose. All right. I'm sorry, love. I just um, I didn't understand. You see, it was this time right, okay. shared. We would ha we would have to. Um... I mean, I, you would feel embarrassment. You would feel, I mean, perhaps, well, perhaps not, that's not that's not the point. That's not the point. That's not used to it. That's not the point. The most important point is you feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I mean, were you worried about the bad habits, the the socks? No, that's all right. I don't mind that. Was it socks? Was it socks? Yes. Uh, the baby's one. The I thought, I thought the, the baby's the one was sort of fine. Two or three. Um, yeah, computer. The toy was all right because yeah, you got yeah. the computer yeah, you right. Anything funny happened in the family? So you'd like to avoid the false teeth well, thing? Uh, yes, I think so, really. I mean, uh, and also the. And the burping to the. Uh, yes, that worked. <laughs> yeah, it was just something silly I did one Christmas, that's all. Right. He's, he's what about, that, what about the name? What about the. Oh, well, I didn't like that very much. I mean, <laughs> something that's a bit sort of private. Is yeah. It, um, okay, really? well, I, I mean, <coughs> what we can do, Ian, um, da David doesn't, isn't uh, worried about the first, the first three. Um, <laughs> you know, so we could, down here. we can stop at toy. <coughs> Have we got a VT or something oh, that we can run? Yeah, hang on a second. Yeah, okay. Um, David, the suggestion upstairs is that we do just that. Go from the end of the toy and then go straight into bringing Ben in. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and um, my promise is that he'll sort it out in an hour. I mean, you'll write something. I mean, you'll let you see it. Oh, it won't. I mean, I'm a assurance. Really, it will really, not go really out. I mean, your, your word is good enough on that. Totally, I mean, it honestly, will not go out. I mean, I'd be grateful if it was written. Of course you know, course you know, Obviously, I don't want to. Yeah, no problem at all. <laughs> yeah. The last thing we want to do is embarrass anybody. <laughs> and that's not been objective. <laughs> 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 
no, we've not upset right. anybody so no, far, but a respect. You have to respect the individual's wishes mm. in the matter, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here trying to get back. Right. Okay. Are you all right? Yeah, sure. So we'll... So we'll start with some applause, just think. Is my mic up? Sorry about the delay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know somebody shouted about get on with it. I'm sorry about that. I must actually say that as far as I'm concerned, uh, regardless of what you think uh, of the show and what we do, we always, whatever we're doing, respect people's feelings. And we never... You, you see things like, like the jellies or JCBs or whatever. We always get people's permission to show anything. And the very fact that uh, David is embarrassed, I think, doesn't reflect upon him at all. In fact, I think it takes a certain amount of guts to stop in front of a number of people and express your dissatisfaction. <laughs> so, uh, we, will, we will, of course, respect their wishes. And if you can just imagine that we've asked three questions which he's perfectly happy about. So we've got up to the point where we were asking about the toy, and uh, he was saying about the fact that he wanted a computer. So we're at that point now. Uh, we could probably pick up on the applause we'll out of the... Applause. We've got one problem solved as far as Christmas presents are concerned, because you know that he wants a computer. Let's now meet him, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Ben. I have waited all of 16 weeks to get my own back with you. Would, would you. Would you like to meet Sarah and David, who until last night had never even met? <laughs> wonderful job is from the Corona Stage School, so he was brilliant. <laughs> but you have well and truly been had. <laughs> this is your, this is your... <laughs> now, what's the next doctor? You remember the day that you got me in the studio, you broke one of the prized BBC records. Yeah. Well, I've had to go out and make thousands of them for children in need. <laughs> So you have to accept this one yeah. and pay me for it because it all goes to children in need. Oh, thank you. I mean, I will most certainly purchase that from you. I am absolutely <laughs> dumbfounded. <laughs> I'll tell you, I mean, two, two thoughts just go through my mind that ever since you looked down the lens of the camera in this very place and you said, I will get you. I have worried. <laughs> worried about videos I've shot for companies, personal appearance. I've worried about everything. Radio shows with me, even? I'm <laughs> terrified about the whole thing. And then, when you said you didn't want to go on, I mean, it just... <laughs> I can't believe the emotions that have just gone through... <laughs> so sorry for you that we embarrassed you. I was then so full of admiration for you having the guts to say you were embarrassed. It was embarrassing for me. <laughs> and now, I loathe you! And what about the man that shouted, get on? Well, can I ask one little favour in of front course. of all these people? That's it, isn't it? You got your own back. Well, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> there are other occasions. <laughs> so how did you feel afterwards? Oh, 
is it. In the radio studio, you said you felt gobsmacked, didn't you? <laughs> Just think, I look such a pilchard. <laughs> Pulled the mains lead out, isn't it? The sort of the form is there, but it's all gone. It was the biggest shock I've ever had in the You studio. were gone for about 15 minutes afterwards. Useless. In the studio. Useless. <laughs> well, thank you for doing it with such panache and getting such professional people to do me. I tell you what. What? Don't look up. Oh no! <laughs> oh, it's all it's right. It's not. Gloria. <laughs> about doing Gloria, but I have wanted for ages to know what this red button does. Yes, Edmunds, uh, Edmunds, no, remember, you must not touch that oh, button. Oh, why not? You just can't. <laughs> what did I tell you? Hey, what did oh. I tell you? Then it must be that button there. Appearing in Babes in the Wood at the Theatre Royal Newcastle.